working on this pre wedding photo i shot um a few days ago and i have to deliver today to the client and i was hoping we can work on this together I just see my process see how i work on real life pre wedding images so let's just get started so that um, we don't waste too much of our time okay so um this is my preset collection for this particular set of pictures i'll be using the magic signature preset to work on them so if you don't know my preset is one of the best preset out there especially for guys that shoot weddings and events so i'll be using my magic signature preset to um, work on this image right here so let's choose our preset uh let me start from down here this is nine not bad it looks beautiful and natural let me go to eight mm, too cinematic for me right now at least for this particular image and um let me go to seven mm, this looks pretty let me go to six mm, not bad either five okay i like what i see here i like what i see here on this five i like what i see here i like the fact that the image looks kind of natural um, I like the fact that her skin is looking very warm. I love warm tone images. For those of you that follow me, you know I love warm tone images. So, and if you want to really understand my thought process and how I executed this particular shoot, I have a video up on YouTube that you should watch that I believe you really love. All right. So, um, I like the way this preset is looking, but let's let's just tweak it a bit to make it better. So, for those of you that don't know my process, what I do is so I do my color grading on Lightroom. Then when I'm done, I head to Photoshop and I do my uh, post-production right there in Photoshop. So that's my process. All right. So um, let me let me open my uh, let me tweak my image. Sorry, I was distracted for a moment. So my clarity is too low. So I'm going to take it back to zero. I'm going to take it back to zero or maybe minus five. My DAs, I think I'll leave it as it is. Then our cloth is looking a bit washed. So I'm going to come to my white over here and reduce the white. Not all the way down so it won't look too flat. So I'll just reduce the white a bit so we can have some element. You see what happens? Let me take up the white and you see. Can you see? It looks washed. When you take down the white, you're able to preserve all those details on our dress. And the image looks very warm. This is 5008. I think I like it, but let me just drop it a bit to like 5650, just a tad bit. Then the image looks dark, so let me expose it a bit. Then, okay, like I'm losing the shadow just a bit, not too much. I don't really have much to do on this particular image. I like the way the color is looking on our skin and the way it's looking at the obby skin for those of you that follow my work you know i love natural looking photographs i love my pictures to look natural i don't really like it to look too cinematic it's not just really really my style you know all right so for this particular image let me add a little bit of green this is minus 16 let me take it to minus 21 to just give it a little bit of greenish feel so that's all i have to do on lightroom and i'll just add straight to photoshop I'll head straight to Photoshop and do my post-production. So you would notice that I am usually very, very fast with my edit. I don't take time at all. I color grade fast. I retouch fast. A lot of times when I'm even, uh, when I'm even working, I can do up to 10 images in 30 minutes without distraction. Trust me, guys. So anyway, let's, let's get started. So the first thing I want to remove is all these distractions from the image. So I'm going to click on my polygonal lasso tool. And I select this reflector thing right here. I select this reflector thing right here. I click on my generator field and I type remove. So if you are using the paid version of Photoshop, you can enjoy this function. It's a fantastic function. So if you can afford to use the paid version of Photoshop, I strongly suggest you go for it. I think it's like $10 there about more or less per month. But if you don't have the paid version, maybe use maybe some crack version, you may not be able to access this particular um, function. So I go ahead and crop my image. My image is usually for ratio 5 because it's, there's chances I will post on Instagram. Even if I don't post, the client might post or the planner or whoever needs to post. So I love to just put it at 4 ratio 5 so that it will be perfectly fit for Instagram. And that way my, my, um, my logos and everything else can show. So I crop to 4 ratio 5. Now let me go ahead and flatten the image. Let me go ahead and flatten the image. I really do not want this car in the shot also. So I'm going to take it out of it, the frame. 
later but let me just do the skin work quickly so let me come to my frequency separation click on my frequency separation action uh, for a full image like this i'll just go for three go for three as my frequency separation action then i delete all this check layer out of it and i come to my low frequency i zoom in and i press my brush i press my brush and i get started so i don't really take much time because I, I don't want my image to look over edited i hate it when it's over edited especially for couple for brighter images so i just blend my brush over the skin you can see my mixer brush settings my mixer brush is set to 33 33 33 31 <laughs> that's usually the range i really do not have a fixed number but i know i operate in the 30s with 30 something is fine for me so i just clean the groom's face slightly i don't have to do too much let me show you before and after and you see that i didn't really do too much on the groom's face let me do the same for the bride's face just blend my brush i don't move colors around i just blend i just blend around so my detail is very simple and basic i don't do anything out of this world i just blend my brush around it I just blend my brush around it and i'm done you see how fast i am then i just uh clean the dress also really dress in um, smooth dresses like this i love to kind of retouch them <laughs> Yeah, of course i retouch them just to make the dress look cleaner I make the dress look cleaner okay so that's done so i didn't really take time at all and i come to my dodge and burn i convert the this image to black and white so i can see my dodge and burn clearly and i click on my dodge i click on my brush i set to 100 and my my flow is usually set to 20 then i do my dodge and burn so i'm on the dodge layer which is the brighten layer so i brighten the bright areas quickly i brighten the bright areas quickly like that like that before and after okay good and i darken the dark areas also darken the dark areas also just like that doesn't take much time at all doesn't take more than i get rid of the black and white layer and i have my before and after good looks good so let me just take down the opacity a bit take down the opacity a bit i love to take down the opacity of the bone also so this is where we are beautiful beautiful all right so i'm, I'm done with my skin work I'm done with my scheme work so now i go ahead to pop my image so the first thing i do is i click on the curve layer i pull it in those of you that have not watched my video on curves please stay on my youtube channel go to my videos on tongue on curves you will see how i use curves there so i pull in my highlights and i also pull in my shadows to make the image pop just by doing this small thing see what see what we see what we have see before the curves and after the curves you see the way the image popped more so i do the same for the levels I pull in some levels but i don't want that dress to wash so i'm going to just add the levels and now let me zoom out then i click on my brush make sure my brush is set to black right here i make sure it's set to black and i paint a dress so that the dress doesn't look washed i paint a dress like that so that the dress doesn't look washed but i still have my levels intact uh -huh. so the image can pop some more then i can add a little bit of brightness just to make the image brighter make the image brighter yeah beautiful then i can whiten their eyes i love to whiten the eyes it, it goes along the, i hate red eyes i love to whiten the eyes let me make sure my opacity is set to 100 and my flow is also set to 100 i whiten the eyes whiten the eyes like that okay all right so then i can now bring in my uh selective color i have a feeling this brightness is too much so let me just take it back to like let's say 10. i can bring in my selective color so i can add a little bit of yellow to make the skin tone richer this cyan i can bring it a bit to the left to give it more red but i don't want to overdo it nice then i'm going to make address white 
so i'll click on my um my eo and saturation i'll click on the color picker i go to select i go to color range then i select on the dress and select the dress okay dress selected i think i would like to select the husband suit also so that's selected and i press this i desaturate i desaturate so as to make the dress very white nice now i would also try to make the husband suit look dark so i'll use my curls just make it look born i'm focusing on the other suit now i want it to look darker so i just do that my curls then i then i invert the layer then i i paint i make sure my brush is set to white then i paint so that the husband suit can look actually black black it looks kind of gray and faded in a way and i don't want that mm -hmm. so you can see before and after so these are the little elements we do to make our image look good you know so the little elements we do to make our image look good so i want to go back to my curve layers and see if i can add more curves to make the image pop so let me add more shadows to make it deeper good okay looks good looks good all right so um last thing let me duplicate my background layer i want to get rid of that car so i'll click on my quick selection i'll click on my select subject good then i click on select i invert i invert the selection and i click on command x and command v okay so sorry about that i i believe i i brought in something i should i clicked on the wrong button let me just get this out of the frame okay so mm -hmm. so my subject selected then i invert my selection then i click on command x to cut the selection then command v to paste the selection so that's done then i can now stick to the background layer and get rid of that car so let me just select that car click on my generative field and type remove type remove so i can get rid of the car this is the beauty of generative field it makes my life easy you know you don't have to use the content aware field tool the content aware field tool is actually good it's the best you can get if you are working offline but i use my lightroom online so it, it the generative view helps me get much easier results all right so that's it see that it's just got rid of that stuff very very quick and easy very very quick and easy now we have the image done let me let me uh okay i don't think there's anything much to do but i think i'd like to add a little bit of glow or flare behind them behind them so let me go to my downloads folder where i keep my files you see that i have some movies here <laughs> please ignore uh let me see okay my light package is right here then i can bring this glow in just to create a little bit of glow behind them i change the blending moon to screen and i can bring it right here just to add more more flavor to the image just coming from up here you know can add more flavor to the image like that but that is right behind is behind the subject so let me bring it up so it can be above just like that but let me take it all the way up all the way up to the top of the frame good so from here i can easily reposition it how i want it of course you don't want to put a flare on top of flowers because it looks weird and fake when you put it here it looks like it's actually there's actually light coming from there you understand it makes it real and natural then you can now use your uh, your eraser tool to delete the edges because it's a square image so there will be some edges to it so you can use your eraser tool to deal with all of that just a second let me make sure my brush is set to soft so that deleting can come easy okay all right so okay i think i'm good now so this is let me group 
everything uh, let me just show you before and after so you see where we started from and where we are this is where we started from and this is where we are see how beautiful and stunning the image looks so all I do is to flatten my image and I duplicate then I sharpen I love to sharpen my image so I sharpen the image I just leave it as maybe 12 to 13 I don't overdo it okay so I think that's the image simple edit quick edit and we've ended up with a very very gorgeous image for our clients see before and see after you know see this one on the right is the raw image this is the color graded image right here on the left and this is the photoshopped image at the end of the day see how beautiful and stunning looks i hope you've learned something here thank you so much guys